everyone, I'm Tatiana, a DevOps consultant, cloud engineer and automation expert with years of hands-on experience helping teams scale their infrastructure. I've worked with startups, enterprises and top tech companies and now I share my knowledge to help you master DevOps, cloud and automation. On this channel we break down Docker, Terraform, Kubernetes and everything cloud, so you can build smarter, deploy faster and create resilient systems. If you are preparing for a cloud engineer or DevOps engineer interview in 2025, you must know Terraform is one of the most in-demand tools for managing cloud infrastructure. Today we are covering 10 must-know Terraform interview questions to help you land your next DevOps job. Stay tuned for expert tips and real-world examples. Let's jump in! Question 1. What is Terraform and why should you care? So, Terraform is a free tool made by HashiCorp. It lets you manage your cloud infrastructure like servers, databases, networks using code instead of clicking around in a user interface like the AWS console. Basically, you write some config files and Terraform builds all your resources for you. Why it's useful? First, you don't have to do things manually anymore. Second, your environments they have test brought stay consistent. And finally, it works with multiple cloud providers like AWS, Azure and Google Cloud Platform. Example, need 5 EC2 instances in AWS? Instead of setting them up one by one, you write a script in Terraform and it will set everything up for you in one go. Pro tip. If someone asks how Terraform is different from tools like Ansible or CloudFormation, here's a simple way to explain it. Terraform describes the end goal, what you want things to look like, while Ansible is more about the step-by-step -step process to get there. Question 2. What are the main parts of Terraform? Let's break it down. There are three main pieces you should know. First, providers. They connect Terraform to cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, GCP and so on. Then we have modules. There are chunks of reusable code that help you avoid repeating yourself. And lastly, there is state. This is a file that keeps track of what Terraform has already created. Example, if you are creating a server on AWS, the provider tells Terraform, hey, we are using AWS. And then you can use a module to automatically handle networking, storage and so on. Question 3. What is Terraform state and why is it important? Terraform state is just a file that remembers everything Terraform has built. Here is why it matters. First. It helps by keeping track of what already exists in your infrastructure. Second, it figures out the relationships or dependencies between different resources. And third, it allows your whole team to collaborate effectively, particularly when the state file is stored remotely, which is key for team-based setups. But here is something a lot of people get wrong. Saving state on your laptop. If something happens to your computer, you could lose all your Terraform tracking. Pro tip! Store state in S3 and use DynamoDB for locking or just go with Terraform Cloud to make life easier. And if someone mentions state locking, it's basically just a way to stop multiple people from making changes at the same time. Question 4. What's the difference between Terraform plan and apply? It's simple. Terraform plan shows you what changes Terraform is going to make. Terraform apply actually makes those changes. Example, let's say you change an EC2 instance type from T2 micro to T3 micro. Plan will say, hey, this is the difference and apply will go ahead and make it happen. Pro tip, before you apply any changes, it's a good idea to run Terraform plan and save the output to a file. This way you can double check what's about to happen 
open and avoid surprises. Question 5. How does Terraform handle dependencies? Terraform usually understands dependencies on its own, just by looking at how your resources are connected. But if you really need to, you can use depends on to say, hey, make sure this thing is done first. Example, you are creating an EC2 instance that needs a VPC. Terraform will automatically know to create the VPC first. Pro tip, try not to rely too much on depends on. Terraform is smart and can usually handle this without extra help. Question 6. What is Terraform Drift and how do you find it? Drift is when something in your cloud setup changes outside of Terraform, like if someone makes a manual change in the AWS console and now your code doesn't line up with what's actually running. To spot that kind of difference, you can run Terraform plan. It will show you if anything has changed that Terraform didn't expect. Pro tip, if you want to keep everything organized and up to date, you can set up automatic drift checks in Terraform Cloud or add a simple step to your automation setup to check for changes from time to time. Question 7. How do you handle sensitive data in Terraform? Here is how to deal with secrets safely. First, use variables and set sensitive equals true. Then store secrets in something secure like AWS Secrets Manager or Vault. Finally, make sure your remote state is encrypted. And seriously, never put passwords directly in your code or state files. Question 8. What are Terraform workspaces? Workspaces let you use the same Terraform config for different environments like dev, staging, and prod. You can run commands like Terraform workspace new dev, Terraform workspace select dev. Pro tip, workspaces are fine for small projects. But for bigger systems, using separate state files is usually better. Question 9. What are Terraform models and why use them? Models are just reusable bits of code that make your Terraform setup easier to manage. Here is why they are helpful. First of all, they help you avoid repeating the same code in every project. They also keep your files nice and organized. And finally, they help make sure your infrastructure stays consistent everywhere. Example, you can create a model for a VPC and use it in multiple places instead of writing that code over and over. Pro tip. Before writing your own module, check out the Terraform registry someone else may have already built what you need. And finally, question 10. How do you use Terraform in an automated deployment process? You can plug Terraform into your CI CD setup using tools like GitHub Actions, GitLab CI, Terraform Cloud. Here is a basic workflow. First, run Terraform FMT and validate to check formatting and syntax. Then, use Terraform plan to preview the changes. And finally, use apply only after someone gives the green light, especially in production. Pro tip, some teams also use open policy agent to apply security rules before changes are applied. All right, that's it for today. These 10 Terraform questions should give you a solid foundation for your next DevOps interview. If you learn something new today, hit that like button. It really helps the channel out. And if DevOps, cloud and automation is your thing, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. What's your biggest Terraform struggle right now? Drop it in the comments. I'd love to help out. Want to connect with other DevOps folks? Come hang out in our Discord community. Links in the description. That's it for today. Keep coding, keep automating, and I'll see you in the next one.